Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Varac Engineering Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by EQRS Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashin Modi from Equira Securities. Thank you and over to you sir. Thanks Manav. Good evening all participants. Thanks to Verok Engineering Management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. We have with us the senior management represented by Mr. Tarun Jain, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Arjun Jain, full-time director and CEO of PTI, Mr. Mahendra Kumar Karumanchi, Group CFO and Mr. Vikas Dukkar, Head Investor Relations. So I would now like to hand over the call to Tarang sir for the for his initial opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Team Equirus, for hosting the call, and uh, good evening to everyone for joining the call. Starting with the current macroeconomic situation, the Indian economy continues to sustain its growth momentum with a GDP growth of 7.6% in quarter two FY24, exceeding market expectation. The automobile production in India during quarter three, FY24, grew on a year-on-year -year basis for all the segments. Passenger vehicles grew by 5%. Commercial vehicles grew by 5.9%. Whereas the three-wheeler and two-wheeler segments registered strong growth of 13.4% and 19% respectively. This growth was due to the strong economy and the late festive season this year. Sequentially, that is quarter on quarter, we have seen degrowth in all the segments. Commercial vehicles have degrown by 8.3%, passenger vehicles by 10.9%, three-wheelers by 8.9%, and the two-wheelers two saw a degrowth of 1.5%. The degrowth on a quarter on quarter basis seems to be mainly due to the year-end phenomenon. Our operations in quarter three of FY24 mirrored the industry situation. Our revenue in India grew by 20.1%, which is higher, both, higher than both two-wheeler and passenger vehicle industry growth on a year-on-year -year basis. However, revenue from our overseas operations had a degrowth as two-wheeler production levels went down in certain markets like Vietnam and Italy. In addition, a customer concentration in these markets impacted our revenue. As we look forward in our overseas business, our focus is to drive customer diversification in the order book and hence mitigate our customer concentration risk. We also drive cost actions through insourcing and working capital optimization. These efforts are likely to lead to a gradual recovery in the overseas markets and improve financial performance in the medium term. Despite degrowth in the overseas markets in quarter three, the overall revenue from operations grew by 9% on a year-on-year -year basis to Rs. 18,846 million. The reported PBT for the quarter was Rs. 708 million, which includes profit from a joint venture of Rs. 250.7 million. The PBT margin improved by 300 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis and came in at 3.7%. Last year, we created an impairment provision for the loan and equity invested in our Dutch entity VCHBV for our four-wheeler lighting operations, which we divested. We have now written off the loans in quarter three as we have completed the FEMA liberated compliances for write-off with December 1st, 2023 as the effective date. This is well supported by opinions from two independent le senior legal counsels also. As a result, the profit of a tax was much higher due to recognition of the tax benefit from the aforesaid write-off. We continue to have strong order wins from our customers in the nine months of FY24. Our customers continue to trust us with, sustainab with sustainability for their new products. In nine months of financial year 24, our new lifetime order wins is rupees 67.57 billion and on an annualized basis rupees 11.99 billion. In quarter three of FY24, our existing customers in the EV space have given us further opportunities as the market continues to evolve. 
These new orders will enable us to increase our revenue better than industry as the content remains five to six times higher than supplying to the IC variants. A revenue from supplying to EV vehicles in quarter three of FY24 was approximately 5.3% of our overall revenue against 4.4% last quarter. Now, I will ask MK, our group CFO, who will walk you through the presentation, which is already uploaded on our website and submitted to stock exchanges also. Over to you. Thank you, Zaran. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'll first take you to the highlight slide, which is slide number four. Uh, so, as Saran mentioned, the year-over-year -year revenue growth was 9.4% uh, uh, in Q3. Uh, India operations grew by a strong 20.1%. This is in line with what we have been saying all along about India operations. Uh, however, we had some challenges in the overseas businesses, uh, largely impacted by deep growth in certain markets in Europe and also because of lower offtake by major customers. So the customer concentration is also a factor which impacted us this quarter. However, we have been working on action plans to achieve uh, gradual <coughs> revival, and we are hopeful of seeing uh, gradual revival over the medium term uh, with various actions uh, put in place. Uh, coming to revenue from EV customers, uh, it was close to 5.3% during Q3. Uh, is also helped by strong performance uh, from some of the key customers in the EV segment. Coming to profitability, the EBITDA margin was slightly lower this time at 9.2% uh, compared to uh, close to 10% that we reported in the last two quarters. Uh, but this was again uh, the impact due to the, uh, the impact of the uh, overseas dip in growth and revenue. So the absolute EBITDA during Q3 was about 173 crores, uh, with PBT margin close to 3.7%, which is still higher compared to last year by about 3%. Uh, as, as our CMD mentioned, PAT was also helped largely by the, uh, the deferred tax asset creation uh, for the write-up of loans, uh, which we actually uh, gave to the divested entities last year uh, in the earlier years. We created provision last year, which is what we connected into uh, write-off. Uh, I'll explain about this uh, in greater detail in the subsequent slides. Uh, in terms of lifetime business one, uh, in the nine months, uh, it was close to 67 billion, uh, with annual peak revenue potential of close to 12 billion INR. Now coming to the industry numbers, uh, <clears throat> year over year business uh, growth was good for all the industry segments. Uh, the two-wheelers grew by 19%, three-wheelers by 13.4%. Passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles also grew by around 5 to 5.9%. However, interestingly or uh, unfortunately, the quarter over quarter uh, saw a degrowth in all, in all the segments. Two-wheeler had a degrowth of 1.5%, three-wheeler 8.9%. Uh, passenger vehicles also went down by 11%, uh, so that's something uh, to be noted. A nine-month basis also, uh, most of the segments, in fact, all the segments registered uh, either single-digit or double-digit growth. Two-wheeler grew by almost 6% or 5.7%, three-wheeler by close to 19%, and passenger vehicle by close to 6%. So now going to slide number six, where we, we show the consolidated financials. The uh, Q3 PBT was 3.7%. Uh, and then, of course, EBITDA was 9.2%. Revenue growth, of course, we explained. Uh, Pat also we will discuss subsequently. Uh, there was an increase in net debt also, which I will explain in the subsequent slides. Looking at the nine-month performance, uh, the total nine-month PBT was coming to 3.7%, EBITDA at 9.7%. Uh, but if you really look at the cumulative year-over-year -year growth in nine months, the revenue grew by close to 7.4%. Uh, EBITDA grew by 24% and PBT uh, by almost 400 plus percentage. Moving to the next slide, uh, this is where we are talking about the net debt number. 
Now, as you may recollect, uh, in the last investor call, we mentioned that the net debt was pretty close to 1,000 crores. It was at 1,006. Uh, this quarter, it actually went up marginally 2,062 crores, so an increase of about 56 crores. Uh, this was largely because of uh, uh, various reasons. One, we also invested in renewable energy, like how we explained earlier. This was meant to achieve cost reductions, which will help us in the next year. And there were certain final payments to be made to the uh, divestment-related uh, consultants, which is what we completed uh, during this quarter. There was also a temporary increase in working capital because we had to correct some of the GST rates on certain parts. Uh, so there was some time lag between the payment to GST authorities and the collection from the customers. Uh, a major part of that has now been collected. Uh, part of it was done in uh, Q3 and a significant part was also collected in uh, subsequent to Q3 in the current month. Uh, we are hopeful of collecting everything this quarter, so that should actually correct the temporary mismatch in the working capital. There are also certain arbitration costs relating to China JV, which we had to pay during uh, the previous quarter. So because of this, uh, there was an increase in net debt. We are hoping that this should get corrected in the coming quarter. So because of this, uh, and also helped by the, uh, the recognition of default tax asset and the improvement in net worth, the net debt to equity is now pretty comfortable at 0.7. Uh, net debt to EBITDA is also one point, uh, below 1.5. Uh, return on capital employed, of course, had the impact uh, both on the numerator and denominator. Uh, numerator because of the lower earnings, and denominator, of course, now the capital employed is more because of the net worth addition, which happened uh, because of the tax benefit. Good. So, uh, going to slide number uh, <clears throat> Slide number nine. So this is where we explain the the logic behind the uh, the write up of loans. We actually consulted uh, a couple of eminent legal experts. Uh, we took opinion from Mr. Arvind Datar and Mr. Rajay Vora, who represent Vaish Associates. Uh, we have been working on this for some time now. We collected a lot of evidence to basically justify our case for opinion. Uh, we also completed or we uh, we also consulted our authorized dealer uh, to basically complete the formalities in relation to FMR regulations. So we could complete all this, and uh, based on this, we actually took this benefit in Q3. So the underlying logic was like these investments which we made in the overseas entities were more in the nature of trade investments. These were not made just for the sake of earning dividends or capital gains. So that was the major underlying logic. And similarly, the Indian operations also benefited significantly in the past uh, due to a technology sharing between four-wheeler lighting and two-wheeler lighting operations. Uh, we also derived benefits from supply chain support and also the access to global OEMs and their India operations uh, help the Indian businesses. Uh, in addition to that, the guarantee commission interest earned on those loans, uh, they were actually offered to taxation in India in the earlier periods. So that is also another reason why we think we can actually uh, claim this, claim this deduction in India. Uh, and one more thing is the divestment. Uh, of course, all of you know the kind of challenges we had at the time of divestment, including the macroeconomic scenario. So in a way, the divestment of these businesses also helped safeguarding the interest of India business. So considering all this, uh, the legal experts felt that we have a we have a good case for claim in this deduction. So based on that, we went ahead and recognized this benefit. Coming to slide number 10, uh, which is about the revenue breakdown. Uh, uh, the strong performance in India and, of course, the uh, growth in the overseas businesses changed the business mix uh, in, in respect to uh, segments. The lighting business, of course, is now at close to 21 percent, it used to be close to 25 percent earlier. Similarly, the outside India business also shrunk now to about close to 14 percent, which used to be about uh, 18, 19 percent earlier. And the strong EV performance uh, also resulted in Bajaj's percentage going to 44 percent compared to 40 percent earlier. 
in terms of new life uh, sorry new lifetime order wins uh, in the nine months we have close to 67 billion of order win uh, if you really look at the breakup uh, bajaj related uh, order wins was close to 54% uh, and then interestingly the ev percentage of the total lifetime revenue is now close to 50% so which is a strong sign uh, for our future growth So then we have also certain awards which we won uh, in different segments of the business. So let me close with this and now we can take some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Abhishek from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, you have one time tax and write off of loans uh, of around the uh, six. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, your voice is a bit disturbed. Uh, are you able to hear me right now? Yeah, we can. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, as uh, there is a one time tax reversal and write off of loans of around 2.96 billion, uh, will this will be flow into our uh, balance sheet? So just wanted to understand what is the impact on the BS and the cash flow of this particular right off and uh, tax reversal. See, uh, if I understood your question correctly, you want to know the impact on balance sheet and cash flow. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in terms of balance sheet, it, this will boost the net worth because to the extent, uh, to the extent of improvement in PAC, it will result in okay. improvement in net worth. Uh, and then, of course, it will also result in creation of default tax asset on the asset side. Uh, mm -hmm. Coming to cash flow, yeah, that's the, the whole intention is to save cash. So that's mm -hmm. why we are going for this. So post this uh, 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 transactions, what would be the cash in our books? Yeah, see, this is basically about right above 1,350 crores. Uh, so we'll be switching over to the new tax regime where the a tax rate, effective tax rate comes to about close to 25%. So then you can compute the benefit, which will which will spread over the next two to three years based on how we grow our profits. So net three, is, uh, uh, our effective tax rate would be around uh, zero to ten percent, or range, or what would be? Sorry, voice is breaking. So in the next three years, what would be the effective tax rate, sir? Uh, See, two to three years. Switching over to the new regime, but effectively our intention is to not to pay actually tax in, the, uh, in terms of cash flow for the next two to three years. Okay, so the benefit will be flow uh, for the next three years in terms of the tax benefit, right? Correct. Correct. And uh, uh, next question on the non bajaj business. We have seen a flat growth in nine months FY24. So how do you see growth ahead because you have owned many business and uh, around more than 50 percent of uh, order uh, in tech is done so what would be the secret uh, uh, your voice is breaking too much we can't hear you but but okay we have a little bit understood uh, the question so i can okay you can repeat it once more so, sir, in non bajaj segment, we have seen lab growth in nine months FY24. So, with the key triggers, for when that you have a very strong backlog in a non bajaj segment. So, um, so basically, you see, uh, if you really uh, look at our business wins, you know, for the nine months, which is, um, you know, almost uh, 1,200 uh, crores, out of this, 54% is Bajaj. And it's also because of, largely because of a lot of the uh, uh, businesses we run with high content, like like EV and uh, clusters and lighting. But the other 46% is actually uh, non-Bajaj. 
which is also quite significant, which is also close to, you know, uh, uh, almost 550 crores. So we are actually growing the, uh, our business wins also with other customers. And we are, and whether it's on the two-wheeler side, a focus, of course, you know, we have said always is that one is that for whatever the products we do today, including our traditional products, we are focusing on capacity utilization. And of course, this capacity utilization is not only coming from Bajaj Auto. It's coming from, which two-wheeler is coming from all the other customers, uh, two-wheeler OEMs in India. And on the four-wheeler side also, uh, you know, we are focused on the plastics and also on the lighting business, where also we are kind of uh, winning business and we are also kind of uh, utilizing, you know, th those capacities. But yes, uh, going forward, I think we have seen a lot of good interest, you know, uh, from, from all the OEMs and also a few new startups, prominent startups on our EV powertrain products, you know, and uh, we had reported actually a couple of wins on the EV powertrain uh, in, in the last quarter, and we are strongly engaged with a few other uh, two-wheeler OEMs, you know, also, and we are hoping that in the coming uh, months or coming quarters, we will succeed in winning some new, some more, I mean, uh, business when it comes to EV powertrain, and when it comes to products like lighting and, uh, and, and also the instrument clusters, that's something, you know, we are anyway actually driving higher and higher sales. And so basically whatever is the, uh, you know, the content based, which is more to do with electronics and EV, you know, we are very well engaged with uh, customers and, and, and we are winning businesses. So I would like to say that when it comes to the India story, you know, it's very much uh, intact and, 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 and growth oriented. Even if you see, uh, you know, our growth, you know, in Q3, our India operations has grown 20% year on year versus 15% for the overall industry. And even in the nine months, you know, we have grown 11%, you know, as again, 6% of the industry growth. So we have actually been, uh, we, we have been actually growing quite well, I would say, uh, you know, when it comes to, you know, the markets. And yes, Bajaj, yes, is our major customer. And whatever we can do with Bajaj, we will do. But it doesn't mean that our efforts are not on with all the other OEMs. And going forward, you will see that, you know, we have won some very interesting business with the other OEMs as well, two-wheeler and four-wheeler. Okay, sir. And the uh, Abbas's Sorry business... Sorry to interrupt, sir. Uh, may we request you to rejoin the question queue as there are several participants waiting for their turns. Okay, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. We have a next question from the line of Pratik Border from Nippon AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. <clears throat> you have a couple of questions. Uh, one is you have won 3,000 crores of orders this quarter, right? That's a fair understanding. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you uh, well, you know. I'm sorry, can you just repeat it? Am I audible? Hello? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, I was saying you have won 3,000 crores of orders this quarter, right? Is that a fair understanding? Yes. Okay. Uh, the second question is, when I look at FI25, I'm on slide number 10, you say start of production from FI25 is around 4,600 crores. What is the average life of these orders in the sense, uh, in how many years will, or when does this peak out? That's what uh, in the initial speech uh, also CMD spoke about that the peak annual volume, peak annual revenue of this is around 1,199 crores. Yeah. And by and by when do you hit that? So like when do you achieve this? Yeah, so Pradeek, the peaks will take place over different years, right? It depends on it depends on multiple factors, but primarily also when the OEM will SOP. And uh, yeah, really, when the OEM would SOP, but you could expect. I mean, whenever an order win is declared, uh, you could expect SOPs generally within, let's say, 12 to at worst case 30 months. So, so here, what happens? I'll tell you is that see, when it comes to the two-wheeler market, normally, you know, you you normally is much faster the development cycle. So there, mm -hmm. I think it could mm -hmm. be within a year also. But when it comes to the four-wheeler segment, there it could even go up to you know one and a half to two years because that's the way you know the uh, the order wins are and and uh, for four wheelers normally you know they take a lo longer time on the development compared to the two wheeler so that's what that's the reason that you know we are giving okay the lifetime and we are also saying annualized basis but on the annualized basis also you're right 
I mean, two wheeler and four wheeler. You know, if you uh, break it up, I think how much is the four wheeler out of the total business win? Sixteen point six. Eleven hundred and twenty-four crores. That is a lifetime order win. Out of but, that, uh, around uh, the sixteen something. Sixteen point six percent. Yeah, very near presentation. Slight. Yeah. So, so sixteen. 16 to 17%. So 6 to 17 percent would be more the uh, four wheeler business win in this, and rest would be more the two and three wheeler. Which would ramp up fast, right? As you just explained, yes, with that 12 to 18. Okay. Okay. The second question was on your China journey. Uh, I just seen, you know, the pack has increased sequentially quite strong. Is, is, could you just explain this? Yeah. So this is largely helped by the uh, revenue growth as well as the margin improvement. Uh, there were certain retro price increases also which happened. Uh, so all this enabled us to uh, decent profit growth. Is this sustainable, sir, going forward also, the 25 crores kind of run? So, so normally what we see in the Chinese market, see for them it's more of a calendar year. So the last quarter is always very strong. And, uh, and, and then that would mean like Jan to March would be Q1 for them. But because of Chinese New Year, you know, uh, obviously the sales and the, uh, the sales would be less. In the first quarter, which you is know, fourth quarter, for which us. is for us the fourth quarter. So, hmm. but hmm. having said that, yes, uh, you know, it's not that the Chinese market, uh, you know, the sales, uh, uh, you know, obviously you can see the market has not really been growing that well compared to the earlier years. But where we are concerned going forward, I think that we have had some very interesting business wins. So we are looking at a, you know, um, a decent growth in the coming year and years. You know, so it will be more like, you know, more of, uh, of uh, you know, increase in our market share in the Chinese market. For the growth, of course, it's not more than 5%, you know, in the in the Chinese market presently. Understood. Understood. That's, that's very helpful. The third question was, sir, on your other expenses, I think we have been highlighting about, you know, reducing our fixed costs. In the, and that's an exercise which has started from, uh, from maybe start of this financial year. But uh, I mean, as of now, uh, I can't see any improvement. So how should I think about reducing your fixed costs? Yeah, see, it's other expenses are not entirely fixed cost, as you know. It has certain variable cost elements also. In fact, a significant part of that is variable cost, including your fuel, freight, uh, packing cost, all mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. uh, But having said that, some of the uh, one-time fixed costs also we had to pick up, like I was explaining earlier that the arbitration related cost and all we had to actually pick up. So those things are more like one timers. They are not sustainable or continuing fixed cost. So that should get corrected in the coming quarters. Can you call that out? How much would be the arbitration cost or the one time fixed cost? Which quarter, down this quarter? For example, it is close to about 10 crores, 8 to 10 crores. Okay. Got it. You also spoke, talked about in your presentation about you know lowering of electricity cost by investing in renewable energy. And our understanding was that should have started started reflecting from quarter three. So, is there been a delay over there, or it's already getting reflected? No, it was not quarter three. It was always uh, scheduled for actually March kind of commissioning, uh, commissioning around March. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should start seeing the benefit, uh, at, if not from April, at least from May onwards. And how much can this help us by? Uh, I don't want to give us micro level detail, okay. but yeah. Okay. Uh, the numbers are quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sir. Have you seen the numbers will be? It will be quite interesting, you know, for you. <laughs> we, want to, we don't want to let you know at the moment. I think let us first realize those numbers, which uh, we feel should uh, probably materialize more from the month of May. And also, it will come in phases. It's not just a one time kind of thing. <coughs> there is more to do in this area also, but it will happen over a period of time. Got it. So the other is with this creation of default tax asset, obviously the cash which you save, does that mean that the repayment of debt will be quite fast in the sense, let's say earlier if you were planning in two years, with virtually no tax payments for the next three years, the cash savings, we can assume a very fast debt repayment. And maybe yeah, by the end of next financial year, we could be very close to net debt, uh, I mean zero net debt or I want to give a future prediction, but yeah, that's the objective. The objective of this is to conserve cash. Okay. So, and just a small bookkeeping question. We have seen a sharp increase in depreciation, and, and the idea was always CAPEX will be lower than depreciation. Uh, are there one-offs over here also, which you are writing it off? And it's not because of additional, uh, I would say, CAPEX-related depreciation, but it's somewhat related to that. 
uh, we have started a new, uh, we commissioned a new plant uh, in Chakan here in Pune. Uh, so it was a leased facility. So the lease depreciation and interest are accounted in uh, both depreciation as well as interest. Uh, so that's the reason. This is despite us uh -huh. running at 70% capacity utilization. So which Sorry segment? Sorry to interrupt, are... sir. Uh, okay. I would request yeah, you to sure. rejoin. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Naveen Beth from Nuama Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the speaker before me uh, uh, was just confirming whether the order wins for the quarter were to the tune of 3,000 crores. Uh, if I look at the order wins for the past two quarters, which is for the nine months, that is, uh, if I look at the order win for the past two quarters, there are roughly 4,700 odd crores. And for nine months, it is 67 odd crores. So the numbers are not adding up. So this quarter's order win are likely to be 2,000 crores and not 3,000 crores. Is that correct? This quarter, the order win has been around 3,000 crores. But he's saying it's not adding up yeah, yeah. compared to the first two quarters. Or, or has that, there been no, some no. cancellation? Like, how do you explain that? No, no. That six month number was around 3,900. Uh, 3,900 odd. And this quarter also it's for closer to 3,000 crores. Not exactly 3,000, it's slightly below 3,000. But yeah. Mm. Okay, and uh, this 6,700 obviously includes the order win from the EV side. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, what's been the gross margin this quarter? Sorry? The gross, gross margins? Gross margins on these orders? No, no, what's the gro gross margin this quarter? Oh, that we can compute, no? it's around 30. Yeah, it's around 36.3%. Uh, 36.3. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have our next question from the line of Jyoti Singh from Arihan Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So, uh, my question is on the debt side. Like uh, earlier quarter, we have committed, like we will going to uh, reduce our debt, but now it increased in this quarter. So, like, what are the objectives going forward on the debt side? No, like how I explained in the, in the earlier presentation, uh, uh, it was part of it was because of some temporary reasons, uh, because of the working capital mismatch which we had. Uh, it should uh, it should actually go down from here after. That's our intention. So the objective is still intact. We are very much working on debt reduction. Okay. And so any any uh, target that we are keeping for the debt reduction that we can disclose with? Uh, we don't want to give a number to it, but like what we said, there is no reason for us to borrow more uh, for any of our business requirements. So whatever cash that gets generated out of business will only go to reduce the debt. Okay, thank you, sir. And sir, earlier also we commented that the H2 will be stronger, but uh, somehow Q2 quarter and quarter, uh, you know, not that great. So what are expectations for Q4? Uh, you're talking about the top line or? Bottom. Uh, Overall, sir, I'm talking about margin and top line. <laughs> yeah, we don't give any guidance like that, but yeah, I mean, normally Q4 industry should be uh, reasonably well, so that should also reflect in our performance. But then, like how our CMD explained, recovery in overseas segments will take some time. Yeah, okay, that. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. We have our next question from the line of Tears Gosar from Swan, Invest Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. My first question is relating uh, our growth. Uh, so, we have seen, yes, quarter on quarter, uh, almost all segments have seen uh, a slip. Uh, two dealer has seen a lot, you know, a better uh, performance than a, a other segment. And in fact, if you see EV two wheelers have seen a growth uh, across all your, uh, you know, customer category. So can you explain and, and we have gained some good order book also over a period. Plus we also dwell upon that our 
यू नो कॉन्टेंट पर व्हीकल और वैल्यू पर व्हीकल हैव आल्सो इंक्रीज इंक्रीजिंगली विद एवरी न्यू ऑर्डर सो कैन यू एक्सप्लेन व्हाई यू नो क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर द द ग्रोथ इज बी म्यूटेड एंड व्हाट इज गोइंग अहेड हाउ डू यू सी दिस मूवमेंट अहेड इन नेक्स्ट थ्री फोर क्वार्टर्स गोइंग अहेड सो आई थिंक here i think it was more to do i think uh, with the season and everything because of the degrowth in all segments so the way we see quarter on quarter the industry i'm talking about india now in industry we grew 3% but we grew 3% and we've always maintained that we are going to be at least 4 5 6% more than the industry so so that is intact and i don't i don't think that today the auto market is still doing quite well you know and i don't see a reason why it will not continue to grow by what percentage i don't know but i think the growth story definitely is intact um, in uh, in india across segments even for commercial vehicles because our gdp growth is uh, uh, this thing quite good so i don't really see uh, you know any kind of a issue really in future growth when it comes to the indian market we are quite bullish and uh, like i said earlier we are very well engaged with all the customers on the two wheeler and on the four wheeler side and uh, we feel pretty confident so uh, my second question is uh, what do you expect your tax outflow percentage as we are moving towards the new regime uh, for the next financial year no we don't give any forward looking guidance like that uh, all that we can say is yeah uh, our intention is to conserve cash by uh, taking this benefit but we don't give guidance on future profits okay uh, sir uh, any uh, uh, regarding our china jv plan uh, arbitration uh, which was there how how is it moving forward are there any positive news there so we were uh, so there is an arbitration on in singapore with the partners in between uh, we have been trying to Uh, have a split with a partner as you know that there are two plants and two entities we are trying to go in for a split but so far we are not being successful i think uh, the order on the arbitration uh, probably will come in uh, probably by july by by half one so then we will probably know what the result is we don't know uh, what will really happen you know uh, over here you know uh, 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 probably one partner buys the other or in in between there is a uh, kind of a, uh, this thing conditions get created for a split so it all depends on the tribunal you know uh, so at the moment we don't know but largely i would say all the arguments and all on this uh, uh, at, at, in singapore are basically largely done there's probably one more i think uh, hearing uh, probably uh, in the month of may uh, or june and after that i think uh, probably there will be that decision taken so we'll come to know probably in the first uh, half of fi 25 we will know uh, you know uh, 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 the the result of this uh, of the jv okay sir sir uh, what was the capex uh, in the first 9 months and what is the capex expected for fi 24 and 25 yeah in first 9 months we spent about 125 crores uh, we may finally close the year with about 160 170 kind of this is for india operations maybe another 20 crores for overseas so, so close to about 180 could be the number okay and and so 25 uh, it could be around this range only uh, we don't we don't intend to take it beyond 200 crores okay okay uh, thank you that, that's all from my side sir Th- thank you and all the best thank you thank you sir we have a next question from the line of arvin sharma from city please go ahead yeah hi uh, good evening sir thank you for taking my question uh, sir first question would be on the pli incentives if you could share any views there uh, is there any accrual um, happening or uh, when do you expect that i have a second question on order books but first your views on pli so we've not accrued anything for pli yet but uh, for certain product lines we would expect to soon all right sir the second question would be on the order wins uh, we see the lifetime order of uh, around 67.5 billion that we've given 
uh, are all these uh, new orders or how many of them would be fresh orders? And since you've shared the FI24 and FI25 onward split, is it possible to share uh, till when, uh, what's the order life or what's the time when these will fructify? Okay, so I'll go one by one. Um, this will be a combination of new, new programs as well as uh, volume expansions on existing programs. Right, or let me not necessarily call them existing programs, but volume expansions where there is modifications in the programs. So if we have declared X volume as an order win in the past, and there's an expansion to that, that will obviously come, that, that, that delta differential will come in what we report now. That's one. The second one was in terms of uh, uh, the SOP expectation. I think we've already shared some information around when we expect SOPs to take place, right? FI25 onwards, he's saying how long, for how long it will continue? So, so directionally, like directionally, like we said, right? I think it it depends lots of times on uh, it depends on customers as well, right? So two wheelers are generally a faster cycle, passenger cars are generally a longer cycle, but I would, I mean, they would generally take place within 12 to 30 months. And 12 to 30 months. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Sir. That's all from my side. All right. 12 you. to 30 months, not from now, but from the actual order week. Yeah, fine. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and want to ask questions. We have our next question from the line of Pratik Podar from Nippon AMC. Please go ahead. Mr. Pratik, are you there? Sorry, I was on mute. My apologies. Am I, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just profitability of these new orders, right? You have one close to 5,000 odd crores of orders, maybe slightly lower than that in the in the last six months. Uh, the profitability, is it, can you just comment on it? How should we think about it? Is it higher? Is it lower? Because the mix is quite interesting, right, in terms of EV players versus ice. So just trying to think about uh, the profitability of these orders. So I would see it's hard to comment on profitability specifically because every product line tends to have different uh, product economics, right? Really based on uh, really based on manufacturing processes, engineering intensity, overhead intensity. Um, so the way I would describe it is it is sustainable profitability, right? We have strong internal thresholds based on which we quote, and that is what we respect. Understood. Understood. And uh, just one small question, and I'm just going back to, to what even I was asking earlier in terms of the ramp up. You know, the way you are explaining that it takes 12 to 30 months from the start of production for the orders to ramp up, looks like FI25 and maybe FI26, where we realize bulk of this 5,000 crores of new orders in the last six months. Uh, it could be quite substantial, so we could see a far higher outperformance over industry growth over the next two years versus what we would have seen in the past. This is just the order book which we have just gathered. That's a fair understanding? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, mean, it is. I mean, for sure, I mean, that's our intention, and uh, we are hoping that uh, whatever other SOP dates the customers have told us, if they get realized, yes, I think, uh, uh, you know, it will keep with our objective of actually, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, growing faster than the market. You put, a lot of these products are also high in content. And next year, you know, uh, we had we had mentioned probably in some of the, one of our earlier calls that our revenue towards EV, uh, you know, we would like it to be 1,000 crores. And uh, and that is a, 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 that's a, there's a very good possibility of achieving that in the next financial year. Understood. Thanks. Thanks for this, and uh, best wishes for the future. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have our next question from the line of Mr. Abhishek from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, what was the operating margin X uh, overseas business? Oh no, we don't give those sub-segment level details. So, what is the margin for the domestic business right now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, sorry, we, we don't share that. But see, we told you that 85% of our, you know, revenues were from, you know, from India. Yes. And, uh, sir, uh, this oversized business is uh, continue to be a uh, from last many 
so how you will achieve the 10% kind of the margin target uh, as uh, the, there will be a continue to be a special uh, yeah, uh, because of these uh, business so what is your plan for that to achieving 10% or 11% yeah. kind of the operating margin so like a cmd already said right uh, we work on we work on de-risking the customer base we have already made moves towards uh, in sourcing and hence uh, improving let's say some of the material margins and also we work given that supply chains globally are slightly better especially from a semiconductor standpoint uh, we work on working capital optimization also right so plus we continue to work on cost reductions across our businesses yeah. okay and my last question on the electronic uh, business unit uh, where we have seen a 15% growth in 9 months uh, so how much is incremental revenue from the ev business in this uh, year and uh, what would be the target for the next year so like what we had explained at the total level ev revenue is about 5% of the total 5.3% and last year i think it was pretty negligible so the entire thing is incremental okay sir thank you sir that is will grow as we move forward thank you sir that's all for my side thank you sir a reminder to all participants you may press star and want to ask questions We have our next question from the line of Mr. Ashin Modi from Equinus Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the lighting India lighting business. So it's a very fast growing segment and with a lot of premiumization happening across. Uh, so how do we see that business growing and you know uh, with competition intensity increasing over here? Uh, uh, how do we see that business growing here? Nine month performance has not been that strong. Uh, that that been seen. So I think when you read the nine month performance, that is our global lighting performance as, a, as including India, of course, as a percentage of our total sale. Right now, of course, like we have talked about, uh, you will see. I mean, and as you also see, right, overseas is reduced as a percentage, so that obviously impacts lighting as well. but in india we don't see we don't see any roadblocks to we don't see any roadblocks to lighting growth at all in fact our lighting business in india continues to do well and that is largely driven like we said before right by the fact that by by the fact that we have been a very early mover if not first mover especially when it comes to led lighting so we continue to have program wins so we continue to see volume expansions whether in uh, two wheeler whether in passenger car and we expect that trend will continue sure sir so sure. and then the next question is regarding the ev specific uh, components so uh, you know uh, have uh, uh, do we have you added uh, any new products over there and uh, uh, where are we on the journey of you know adding uh, uh, other oems uh, for our ev specific products so today practically in the product range that we already address and we already market uh, I, i don't think we want to add any products beyond that in fact we are clear we will not add products beyond that uh, like we stated last quarter we were able to add two customers uh, two further ev customers for ev specific components and we will see those realizations we will see those realizations over the next uh, you know the next 12 to 18 months of course these components i mean essentially when you make when you are trying to supply the ev power train it's a extremely engineering intensive component and is also a very long sourcing timeline uh, kind of component so we continue to have strong engagement with multiple other customers 
and yeah hopefully we should have uh, we should have over the coming quarters we should have more to report okay. uh, and uh, are we uh, in, uh, do we have enough capacity to uh, you know have the growth uh, that uh, our major customer is seeing on the ev side or uh, do we need to put in more capacity for the ev specific component so i think we've already given visibility around what our total capex numbers would be limited to and within those numbers we are able to support any expansion the customer would like yes sure uh, thank you i'll join that thank you sir a reminder to all participants you may press star and want to ask questions we have a next question from the line of priya ranjan from hdfc amc please go ahead yeah hi thanks uh, just couple of question one is on this uh, the ebitda margin if i look at the quarter on quarter the volume by I mean top line was flat still there has been 60 basis points so is it largely because of mix or uh, there is something more uh, to it yeah and largely driven by these uh, challenges we had in the overseas market so that had an impact okay so overseas have higher margins so that's why and where is this 10 crore uh, arbitrage arbitration charges is booked is it part of the uh, other expenses or it's yeah, yeah correct correct so so that explains the 10 i mean the because if i do the 10 uh, crore in the ebitda then i think 40 50 basis point impact is because of that right no see uh, there was arbitration expense in the previous quarters also it's not that it was zero earlier it was maybe to a smaller extent so last quarter it was close to 10 crores and arbitration plus a couple of other consultancy related expenses and this is going to continue for couple of quarters or uh, this will now because uh, i think most of the hearing is done so what is correct it should not be to this extent is our expectation because like what you said uh, most of the arbitration hearings have been completed but it will come down gradually uh, yeah okay and in terms of overall capacity utilization of different plants if you can throw some light on uh, what are our operating uh, capacity utilization and uh, how much benefit i mean as we enter next year with a very good uh, order book and the order ramp up so should we expect meaningful operating uh, utilization level in the going forward i think fy 25 26 yeah so i think like we stated in the past uh, i would you know our blended uh, capacity utilization because of course we operate multiple different processes uh, would be around 65 uh, would be around 65% some places maybe around 70% um but, but but again right i think we have the order book we have defined what our uh, what our capex outlook is for this year and also for next year and within that uh, within that we believe we should definitely be able to execute the order book now of course that will also lead to an improvement in capacity utilization and uh, as we move towards the uh, the greener energy so what is our plan so how much uh, greener energy uh, in terms of uh, in terms of our internal utilization uh, what should what should be the percentage share from that coming with the the proposed one which is under implementation we should be uh, somewhere between 35 to 40% in terms of the overall sourcing from renewable energy okay and uh, this will be uh, supplied back to the grid and then whenever you require so you can utilize it from the grid yeah i mean we will bill will we'll get bill for the net net amount okay net, okay. net amount of consumption understood understood and in terms of your uh, the cash conversion to ebitda i mean uh, that has been not so strong so any specific reason is i think the only working capital related issues is there because your ebitda was i think 175 crore 73 crore this quarter i i guess with around 40 odd crore will be primarily driven to uh, the uh, the capex so where are i been the you're right i think i also explained it earlier in the slides so the, the temporary working capital challenges this quarter uh, created that kind of uh, uh, disparity but if you see the earlier quarters it was uh, coming out nicely okay quarter on quarter is better cash conversion you should look for a longer period so 9 month uh, the numbers looks uh, good 
ओके ओके थैंक यू ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू थैंक यू सर वी हैव अ फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ प्रतीक पोडर फ्रॉम निपन एएमसी प्लीज गो अहेड सर मे बी इफ यू कुड जस्ट स्पेंड सम टाइम एक्सप्लेनिंग अस एज टू द ओवरसीज ऑपरेशन वी हैव सीन अ वेरी वेरी शार्प डिक्लाइन दैट से आई वुड टू सी फ्रॉम क्वार्टर 1 how should we think about it recovery i know you have explained it in bits and parts but uh, you know the risk mitigation chart, i mean the customer concentration risk which we have seen and you're trying to mitigate that how should we think about this business in the next 2 3 years or maybe next 12 months so uh, see where it see there abroad uh, you know the major uh, area for us is europe you know and of course we have uh, also uh, vietnam so Uh, see here the the issues have been largely to do with the european market where we are concerned whether it's to do with two wheeler or whether it's to do with you know the electronic products and of course this has been a little bit compounded by concentration on a few customers you know and uh, and uh, and uh, and basically what has happened is that our when it comes to two wheelers our focus has been more on scooters you know and uh, where scooters have actually de- degrown uh, more than the motorcycles you know in in that segment so what we are doing is the now we are also winning businesses on the motorcycle front you know where it comes to europe and also where it comes to a vietnam plant you know the focus is now going to be much more with the japanese oems you know for today the concentration is more actually with some of the european oems even in that market yes we have uh, japanese customers but now we would like that we are focusing more uh you know with the japanese o- oems and uh, we also strengthen you know our uh, sales uh, you know a sales team you know in um, you know both in uh, uh, also in uh, i mean also for southeast asia we already have our office in japan you know which is also closely working on seeing that a lot of these businesses you know kind of uh, you know uh, this thing uh, uh, you know uh, 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 are really converted you know into orders for us so uh, there's a lot of focus where it comes to more uh, about say southeast asia and where it comes to europe yes the the growth there you know will not be as high as southeast asia comes to two wheeler but where it comes to electronics you know the a plant in romania that's where we are looking at you know uh, we are really focused on winning new businesses you know over there so one is of course the focus on you know sales sales wins you know on the overseas the other is what we have done is that uh, which includes china and also in vietnam that we have you know we were so far you know uh, though our margins were were quite okay you know uh, i would say across the listing product lines but you know we didn't have our own electronics you know so far you know when it comes to uh, two wheeler uh, products you know uh, uh, or the four wheeler lighting in china so now we have installed you know our own smt to the extent of at least you know when it comes to two wheeler i think it will be almost 100% uh, when it comes to uh, uh, four wheeler it will be 30 to 40% so this will also you know increase margins to the extent of at least 3 4% you know so this is one uh, you know big step so one is sales growth utilization of capacity is there which we have seen uh, you know in the last quarter go down and which will be impacted for the next few quarters also but we are working very proactively on sales wins you know which probably uh, you know should should happen probably uh, let's say within uh, within a year's time that we'll see that growth uh, this thing taking place on the other hand cost controls and mainly on the bomb side smt in house smt is what is going to drive margins up which will help the overall situation of our business division you know abroad this is it sir thanks 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 sir thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day and i would now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments so thank you very much uh, uh, so i just want to kind of uh, say that the focus of the company remains to further strengthen the indian operations bringing back back the profitability in our overseas op- operations control on overall capex and generation of free cash flow and reduction in net debt so with this thank you uh, for joining the call and uh, 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 we'll again uh, meet soon after one quarter thank you thank you on behalf of equira securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines